Hi everybody, Sean O'Kane here with Chip Estimate TV, where we bring you the latest trends and information on IP, chip design, and everything in between. My guest today is Mr. John Blyler. He's joining us again uh, for uh, our, our annual travel log. Now, John travels all over the country to many different events, and he, he brings back all the, 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 the coolest information of what's happening out there, and uh, we can give that back to you through chipestimate.com. Let's just jump right into it. You've been to a number of events, lots of things going on this week. Arm TechCon right here, yep. TSMC OIP Forum, and JAMA Software Summit. Anything in common with these three? I mean, you always ask the tough questions. I know. Uh, but I would say there is, and I would say it's the, it's the interplay of hardware and software. Mm -hmm. um, at the TSMC event, uh, one spectrum there, deep semiconductor, chip yeah. level. Of course, they have software as well, but it's, it's related to the chip. JAMA, you might say, is the other end. They're, they're more focused on software and the management of software applications. More than that, but for this discussion. And then here at ARM, they kind of span both in a way. They have the deep, uh, the deep chips at the leading edge, mm -hmm. and then they also have, of course, this 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 hardware, software embedded environment, the Internet of Things, and whatnot. It's just that's just flowering. Mm -hmm. And of course, they reach up to the application space with their cloud, their cloud um, IDE mm -hmm. environment for mm -hmm. software developers. Let's start with the TSMC OIP. What was new there? Well, uh, again, a lot. I, I would uh, two things struck me. One was um, uh, Dr. Cliff. Uh, who I believe his name was, yeah. head of R&D, gave a talk and he talked about the need at the leading edge at 10 nanometers to do this color alignment of the design. Mm -hmm. I guess if you're a, a color blind designer, then you're, you're out of luck. But I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, at the other end of, of at, so also at that keynote, they had Mike Muller from uh, ARM and right. he was saying, you know, yes, you got to focus on the low end, but you also have to focus on Existing well, nodes. well, the existing nodes, because it's, it's not just 16 and 10. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're looking at, uh, as you said, existing nodes at, at, at 28 and, and higher. Even higher. Uh, which apply to many different applications, specifically to the OIT push and revolution here. Right, right. The, if the Internet of Things is nothing if not about connectivity. So right, at right. those higher nodes, where you have the analog and the mixed signal and RF and wireless, they're going to be at, at these higher nodes. You're right, going to have right. to integrate them in stacked eyes or something, but somehow they'll, they'll have to be together. Um, you know, that, that idea, though, that mm -hmm. um, the, the other thing about the Internet of Things is that, it, as Simon Seeger said today in his talk, we have to be very good as, at, at abstracting away the technology if it's to become um, a mass adoption by consumers, right? It's got to be easy and straightforward. Right, right, right. And he, he had that quote from uh, Douglas Adams that he kind of wrapped up with, with, where it was, how do you know, how do you recognize that something is still too technical? And the answer is, uh, a good clue is if it comes with a manual. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, uh, do it, it, it's, as far as the IoT and and so prototyping mm. Mm. these new devices and talking about a manual. Do you need a manual? <laughs> That's right. Well, um, so th so that gives me a, a a JAMA at the they had a summit and they talked about many things there too. But one of the things that struck me was this I, this idea of abstracting away technology using a technique called pre. Predotexing, not prototexing, but predotexing. Predotexing. And the idea here is that you, inexpensively, you try to make sure that you're doing the right it, whatever that it is. And you almost use a, um, it's kind of almost a, a fake sort of technology. The technology is hidden from the from the user. So he mm -hmm. cited, the speaker cited IBM's use of uh, the first uh, voice to text mm -hmm. machine. What they did is they actually had someone in the back room doing the typing, but they brought in, uh, you know, the, the the, uh, the users and said, talk into this and look, it's going to be displayed on the screen. Would that be useful? Voice and of recognition. Course, yeah. yeah, but it was, it was uh, they hid the technology away because it was really some guy in the background still just typing it in, not on a computer because they didn't have the technology yet. They right. wondered if it was a direction to follow. Uh, so one way or another, uh, abstract away the technology. Very interesting stuff. So you can catch more of John's blogs on IP Insider on chipestimate.com. That's twice a week. Lots of viewers, lots of reader readership there, um, and and check that out. And of course, uh, I, I do want to plug the the new JB Systems, oh, okay. the IoT uh, systems and IP systems uh, blogs that yes. you have, right? Yes, um, they're going to be online sites here, and I'll, you'll hear more about it later later this month. But mm -hmm. uh, but they're coming. Pretty cool, John Blyler, right here for John. My name is Sean O'Kane. 
We'll see you next time on Chip Estimate TV.